everybody this is Lisa with Rose Molly by Art of Lisa welcome back to my channel today I'm going to go over what I've been talking about the last couple of weeks a video that I've kind of hinted at about prepping your wood so let's get to it all right let me get you guys set up so I'm actually in a space outside of my studio I'm very fortunate to have a nice size basement and my kids don't always like it because I kind of overtake their area. So anyway, what I have set up here today is some pieces of wood that need to be worked on and some pieces that are already on its way. So when you're out buying pieces of wood, and I like to put gloves on by the way when I'm sanding and prepping my pieces simply because I don't want to get all that dust on me. So also in my area I have a plastic mat set down so this is easy to clean you know you want to be in a well ventilated space you don't want to breathe in the uh, the sand and the, the, the dust as you're working on things all right so the these two pieces here I actually purchased at AC Moore very reasonable but usually that means you're going to have areas that need more work you can see how coarse this is on the edges here. So those edges are going to have to be sanded pretty well. This piece is also from AC Moore. It's in slightly better shape only because it doesn't quite have the ridges, but you still need a good sanding on there. And then over here, I have a piece done by a fellow named Mike Lusk. He is a woodworker and he is Lusk Scandia woodworks in Wisconsin. So his pieces are a little finer. I'm not going to have to sand as much here on these. All right, so let's go to this piece here. On this piece, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper that's rougher and coarser. The coarser it is, the better for taking down these rough spots. So this is a 220, you can do a 180, and I have it folded in half so I can get into this area in here. So I want to just work back and forth. Let me move my water and stuff out of the way here. These are things for a little later. All right, so I'm just going to work my way through it and sand down these rough edges. Now, it's time consuming, but it's also kind of gratifying and kind of relaxing. You know, you're on a mission as you're working on sanding these pieces. And I'm just gonna keep working on it and I keep touching and smoothing and seeing. And we want to try to get it as smooth as possible. So these edges are nice. This edge is a little rougher. It also is the end of the grain. And probably the piece of the saw that took this down wasn't quite well, obviously it was probably machine made and not made by a human. So it's not going to have that smoothness to it that you will when you have a piece like this by Mike Lusk. So here, I just have a little bit of work in here. This is also a different kind of wood. This is a basswood. This wood, oh, well, it's got a pretty good grain to it. So this isn't basswood. I'm not sure which this is, but you have a higher grain level with that. So on this one, same thing, I'm just going to come in here on this edge and I'm just going to smooth it out. Now I can even go to a finer sandpaper. I have a 400 here. I have how many different pieces do I have? Oh my goodness, do you save? I save my sandpaper like there's no tomorrow. So and sometimes like this one is well used. This is my 600 here. This is my finishing sandpaper. All right, so same idea. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna work my way through. I'm not too worried that I'm getting some stuff on here unless I'm going to base coat in white, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do a blue on these. So you keep feeling it and touching it to see how it is. This one's in pretty good shape. Even here, it's nice. Again, when you have a person making it for you, typically you'll have less sanding. All right, so here I'm going to take a finer grit sandpaper. I'm going to go back over it, and I'm just going to keep working it to make it as smooth as possible. Another type of sandpaper I have are these sanding blocks. You can purchase this online, and it's nice because you can bend it very easily and work it through. 
And we're just going to keep going through here. Make this as smooth as possible. And you just keep going through it until you get it to the consistency you want. It's nice too. This is pretty good shape. And give it a light sanding. All right. Not too bad. On these here, again, your edge just needs a nice rounding out. And you'll find as you do more and more of this, you will get the feel of how you want it to be. Oh, it has that nice smell. Too bad I don't have smell of vision. I'm a carpenter's daughter, so I always enjoy the smell of uh, freshly cut wood or sanded wood. Brings back memories of my childhood. All right. So, that being said, what I do now is I take this and I'm going to wipe this down with a brush, okay? To get my little pieces off of there, my little fine dust. Okay, I'm also going to wipe my area down a little bit. I have paper towels ready for that. I can wet them. Just kind of wipe my area down a little bit. Okay. So now the other part of your questions that people have been asking me is once I have things sanded, I'm going to use this one here, how do I put my base coat on? So for myself, I use one part of clear glaze, medium. It's a light surface sealer. Again, it's my Joe Sonia uh, paints with chroma. And I'm basically going to do one to one. I have a old color called Blue Haze from Delta Ceram Coat. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but it's a color I really like. And I've actually gone to Sherwin-Williams and I've had them color match it for me. So I'm doing one to one, I'm gonna mix that together. And what I use, this is just a applesauce cup that I had. My son is a big applesauce kid. I save those cups and I reuse them. They're very handy. Have my paper towel for that. Now I have my handy brush ready also. Oops, let me just lift that up. Sorry about that. All right, I also have a piece of plastic wrap here. I am going to take one of my paper towels and I'm going to take my water. I'm going to wet that paper towel. I'm going to put it in my plastic wrap and this afterwards, once I use my brush and I want to save it, I don't need to wash it out because I'll need it again later. Later, I'm going to put it in this paper towel, which is wet, and I'm going to fold it over. And this plastic wrap is going to keep that brush nice and fresh. I do this also when I am painting my pieces and they keep all my brushes fresh for me. All right, so this piece is ready to go. It has a nice feel to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the grain of the wood. You can also go like this. You want to get this paint into the grain. You want to get it in so the, you don't have to do as many coats. So I'm going to come around the edge here, push it in. I'm just going to work my way around the piece. All right. Come this way. Now come around the edge. This is also the handy part of having your gloves on. Um, as you can probably see from my um, apron, I'm not always the neatest painter. So uh, I always have paint on my hands. When I go to the supermarket, they're like, oh, you've been working today, haven't you? So uh, this is my way to kind of disguise when I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't want to have paint everywhere. All right, so let me come around this way. So now this is all nice and ready to go. All right, I smooth it out a little bit, okay. So then I'm going to put this aside to let it dry. Again, I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to put this here. Take my brush. Open up my plastic here. 
my nice wet paper towel, put it in, seal it up. I can even wrap it. I can put it aside for right now. This little friend of mine, I'm going to put aside for a few moments. And now over here, I have a piece that's already on its way. Now, it's a little rougher than I'd like. So this is where I go back to that nice 600 grit. Um, a lot of times people use 400 grit, but I like the 600 grit. And then I like to do a wet sanding on this. I'm just going to take that cover it up, put it out of the way. I take a little water on my sandpaper and I just follow my grain and I rub it out. A lot of times you can use a sanding block with it. You're going to come around your edges smooth it out a little bit more, get into your edges in here. And you don't want it to be so ridiculously smooth because you want your paint to be able to adhere. But you do want to have a nice smooth coat to it. All right, I have a little paint color on there. So let's say I feel, hmm, maybe I need to have one more coat on there. Well then that's easy enough once I get this done around my edges, nice and smooth here, all right, oh my goodness, come here, I really like how this is looking now, okay, and this paper towel by the way is a, a Viva, it's lint free, you can go to Home Depot and get the uh, automotive paper towels. Uh, you want to use the lint-free one and just much easier to work with. Okay, now it's ready. I can go ahead and put another coat on. I take my brush out of that plastic wrap. It's ready. And now I'm just going to follow the grain here. Now the coat underneath here is a little darker. That is that color that I had Sherwin-Williams paint put together. So I'm just going to follow. Okay, now I'm going to do my edges now that they're nice and smooth. Now eventually this will become probably a welcome sign. I do a lot of those. Okay, we're going to come around here. Around the edge here. And we just kind of make sure we've got everything. Give it one more coat like this follow along. Now if I find this again has that sealer on it so if I find later on that I need to sand a little bit once I put my varnish and my paint and varnish on there those sand marks will kind of dissipate. All right so that's a kind of basic primer on sanding and prepping your pieces. I will do further videos on this in the future and if you have questions please feel free to put them in the comment section. I will answer as soon as I can and if you let me show myself here. Hi and if you enjoyed the video today please feel free to subscribe and uh, I hope I can do more videos for you. Everybody have a wonderful day and God bless.